seeds in the men's side of the bracket. Alabama, the top overall seed on the one line for the first time ever. They breathed through the SEC tournament, winning all three games by double digits this weekend. So they're one in the South. Purdue was the one seed in the East, led by National Player of the Year candidate Zach Eady. He's coming off consecutive 30.10 rebound games uh, as Purdue won the Big Ten championship. Reigning national champion Kansas looking to defend its title in a tough West region. Jayhawks can become the first back-to-back -back champ since Florida did it some 15 or so years ago. And Houston is a one seed for the first time since Phi Slamma Jamma. Uh, their star Marcus Sasser's status is in question after he strained his groin on Saturday. Caesars likes Houston actually at number one. They're the six to one favorite. That ties the longest odds for the pre-tournament favorite since they expanded the field to 64 teams in 1985. A reminder, Houston will be the home. The city of Houston will be the home for the Final Four this year. And look who's gotten up with us. It's my Uncle Seth, no relation. Seth Greenberg here to break down your bracket. So we just went through the number one seeds. Which seed Seth has the most difficult road to the final four first of all Grady very impressive that you're multitasking Aaron Rodgers and the NCAA tournament <laughs> that's very impressive for you uh, the the most difficult is Purdue and the reason Purdue is because they got Duke in their bracket Duke is not a number five seed but they could play him in a sweet 16 this is a Duke team defensively they can dominate you their average allowing their opponents to shoot about 39 percent from the field, excuse me, 49 percent from the field in the last uh, four or five games. This is an elite defensive team, Duke. This is a Duke team that has two seven-footers, Greeny. Two seven-footers. Kyle Filipowski is an absolute matchup nightmare. Their backcourt is an elite defensively. They've got rib protection. And like I said, Filipowski is a matchup problem. I like this Duke team. That is a tough matchup for Purdue. One of the few teams that Purdue could face that can actually have a guy in Derek Lively that can look – that can look Zach Eady in the eye. All right, so that's the hardest road. How about the easiest road to the Final Four amongst the top seeds? Uh, it's Alabama, and it has a lot to do with what Alabama is all about. I understand Creighton's in that that bracket, as is Arizona, but Alabama they have, to me, the number one college player in the NBA draft, and that's Brandon Miller. He is absolutely a match-up nightmare. Six foot nine inch point guard that can knock down threes, make plays, just brutal to match up with. This is an elite defensive team. They run you off the three-point line. They run you off the two-point line with their length and athleticism. I call them Noah's Ark. What do I mean by Noah's Ark? They got two of everything. <laughs> Alabama is the most talented, most athletic team in the field. Alabama has the easiest road. All right, now I'm going to make an admission right now. Billis needs a Final Four from me for his selection special, and I have been, as you pointed out, so consumed with Aaron Rodgers. I haven't filled out my bracket yet, so help me. What, what, who should I put in the Final Four? Who's yours? I've got Alabama, Duke, Texas, and UConn. And Alabama, the most talented team. Duke was on nine in a row in the way they're defending right now and their length and athleticism. Texas won the Big 12. They won it without Timmy Allen. He should be back for the NCAA tournament. Uh, their backcourt play is experienced. They got six seniors. And then UConn. UConn dominates the glass. They've got to get good point guard play. Tristan Newton's got to play well. But Adama Sinoco is a problem. And Jordan Hawkins is a big-time three-point shooter. That's my Final Four. Okay, so that's, that helps me a lot. I'll probably copy that, all of that from you. In the meantime, <laughs> what I know all the fans are looking for today as they're filling out their sheets of integrity is the juicy upsets, which are brought to you by McDonald's. So give us two juicy upsets in the first round, starting with a 10 seed that you like to win. Yeah, that's Penn State. Penn State has one of the most unique players in college basketball, and that's Jalen Pickett. He backs people down, and when he backs people down, as a guard, you've got to double him. He kicks it out. This is an elite three-point shooting team. They invert their offense. But the reason I have them upset in Texas A&M is Texas A&M relies on turning you over and getting to the offensive glass. Penn State does not turn the ball over, and they do not allow you to get to the offensive glass. So that offensive spacing with those two factors, I like Penn State winning. Yeah, if Penn State makes threes, they're a very tough team to beat. There's always a 12-5. Who's the 12 that you like? Yeah, I've got, I like this VCU game. Uh, talk about upsets. You've got to own the identity and rhythm of the game. That's what TCU does. Excuse me, VCU does. I'll tell you how they do it. They extend their defense. And when you play against St. Mary's, you limit your exposure after defending the half court. They're a relentless offensive rebounding team. They turn their opponents over a quarter of the possessions. They've got great depth, great athleticism. I think just like Gonzaga beat St. Mary's 
by extending their defense, I think VCU can do the same. All right, outstanding. My uncle Seth, no relation. Seth Greenberg, much more from you as the show continues today. Now, the women's NCAA tournament field was also revealed last night. Undefeated South Carolina, no surprise. The top overall seed, they are the defending champion. And our Rebecca Lobo thinks they will be another tough out when the dance begins. As long as this team stays healthy and plays their baske best basketball, I don't see them getting beat. They have all the ingredients that you need. Not only do they have dominance at every starting position, they have an incredibly deep bench this year. They have the experience of winning the national championship a year ago. This senior class has been to two Final Fours. If this team stays healthy, if this team plays to the best of their ability every game, I just don't see them getting beaten. Gamecocks are a minus 180 favorite to win the title at Caesars. Next closest team is plus 800. So that's about as prohibitive as it gets. South Carolina can become just the fourth program to win back-to-back -back titles. Will be the first to do it undefeated since UConn in 2016. So don't forget to fill out your brackets with us. What one seed are we most confident in as this dance gets underway? It's Alabama. I call them Noah's Ark. They have two of everything. They also have the best NBA prospect in college basketball, Brandon Miller. 6'8 guard, knocks down the three, gets to the lane. He's a matchup problem. Their top 20 offensive defensive efficiency, they run you off the three point line and they protect the rim. They are a bad group of dudes. And then how about the other side? The most vulnerable one or two seed early in this dance. Yeah, I think it's Purdue, and, you know, we talk about Zach Eady, but you know what? You got Duke in their bracket, and Duke is a team over the last nine games holding their opponents to 39% for the field. How do you become a great defensive team? You run people off the three-point line, and you protect the rim. They do both, and then offensively, Kyle Filipowski is an absolute matchup nightmare. I really like this Duke team over Purdue in the Sweet 16. All right, so then that leads me to this. Give me a dark horse five seed or greater that you could see making it to the final four. Yeah, when you think about a dark horse, you look at this Duke basketball team. Duke is not a five seed, probably a four, maybe even a three, but it's a Duke team. Their guard play is elite. They have the ability to defend. Filipowski is a matchup problem, and Derek Lively absolutely blocks out the sun. Duke's playing their best basketball. They've won nine in a row. And you know what? This is Duke team that is poised to make a deep run and maybe a championship run in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, this, we usually call those Cinderella's. It's impossible to call Duke a Cinderella call regardless him. of any of that. So, so everyone is sitting and waiting, and they're starting to fill out their brackets. Who do we have in the Final Four, and who cuts down the nets? Oh, I've got Alabama cutting down the nets, and I've got, you know, it's an interesting Final Four to me, but I've got this Duke team getting to the Final Four. I've got Alabama, who I think is the most talented team in college basketball, Texas. An elite, elite backcourt, Timmy Allen will come back, complemented by a terrific defense and depth and six seniors. And then Connecticut, a team that can dominate you in the paint, they can dominate you on the glass. Jordan Hawkins is an elite three-point shooter. If their point guard play holds up, this is a UConn team that goes back to the Final Four, but Alabama is just better than everyone else. They're the deepest, most athletic team, and they've got the best college player in college basketball, and that is Brandon Miller. Yeah, there is no chalk, or very little chalk, on that sheet, which I think is reflective of just how even uh, the tournament feels as though it is as we get started. Uncle Seth, thank you. We will see you on the road to the Final Four. In the meantime, the women's NCAA tournament field also revealed last night an unbeaten South Carolina is the top overall seed. Certainly no surprise there. By far the best team in the country, defending champs. And our Rebecca Lobo says they're going to be a very tough out when the tournament begins. As long as this team stays healthy and plays their basket best basketball, I don't see them getting beat. They have all the ingredients that you need. Not only do they have dominance at every starting position, they have an incredibly deep bench this year. They have the experience of winning the national championship a year ago. This senior class has been to two Final Fours. If this team stays healthy, if this team plays to the best of their ability every game, I just don't see them getting beaten. And neither does Las Vegas. They're a minus 180 favorite to win the title at Caesars. The next closest team is plus 800. South Carolina could become just the fourth ever program to win back-to-back -back titles. They could be the first unbeaten champ since UConn in 2016. So ESPN Tournament Challenge men's and women's brackets are open. Scan the QR code to download the app, then create a group, invite your friends, fill out your brackets, get ready for the madness with the number one.
Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.